not trying to um, tell a story as a rule. You know, there's no storytelling in, in my artwork. It's more about the surface or this strange thing next to this strange thing. Here it is. I'm giving it to you. This is a st stop along my journey of, of seeing things. I have a, in my mindset some things that I want to work with. I, the drawing I look at quite a while, and that's laying shapes down, working them, that type of thing. Then after that is kind of the more spontaneous area is doing some of the color. The shapes in paper castings are created when certain objects are literally surrounded with pulp. When the piece dries, the objects are removed and they leave behind an impression that gives the piece its three-dimensional quality. So I might start with putting in shapes. You know, you have things like CDs, they work really well if you want a circle shape. And like you have bits and things from fluorescent fixtures, you know, they, they all have, you know, different types of texture and, and, and use. So normally when I do uh, do castings, I, I generally will make you know, a variety of colors. And then this is all pigmented fiber. So I can literally paint with this. I can uh, mix colors. I can make a yellow and blue, turn it into green. I can make shades. I can tint it. And then what I would do is carefully and then uh, start laying down you know, this is my blue area. This is two pounds of fiber will make you about uh, 50 sheets of eight by 10 uh, dry fiber. And two pounds of fiber will go into one of these castings. So everything that's positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive. Tom uses paper that's all handmade from fibrous plants like cotton, flax, and hemp. But he also makes his own, or more accurately, grows his own. At his studio in downtown Cleveland, he and his team make paper from kozo. It's a Japanese plant grown in a small plot next to his studio. This provides the perfect classroom for Tom to teach local art students and other artists how to make paper from scratch. After the first frost of the year, which for us here in Cleveland is usually beginning mid-November, um, we go ahead and harvest the plant. The first thing you do after you cut the branches is you steam it. That allows the outer cellulose bark layer to be peeled off very easily. It's that white cellulose that becomes your paper. So then you have to go ahead, make sure it's still moist, and you use a series of different mallets like you see here. There's a series of grooves in them, different shapes and sizes of mallets, but it's hand beaten. And so what happens is those cellulose layers um, start to break apart. The cellulose is then mixed with water, and when it's dried, you get paper. This paper making in and of itself is becoming a lost art. So to preserve the art form, Tom opened the Morgan Art of Papermaking Conservatory and Education Foundation. Its name comes from Tom's longtime friend and patron, Charles Morgan. His gift, given back in 2009, helps keep the fine art of papermaking alive and thriving in Cleveland. We have open doors, you know, we are always welcoming artists in for residencies or for workshops. Pop off. This is his life. He's an artist. He wants to provide art opportunities for other people in the community, both in Cleveland, in Ohio, um, and internationally. Um, he has a drive and a passion that goes unmatched. 